My love is everlasting, ever, ever. everlasting to everlasting. Ever, oh, ever. Girl, you make me upgrade my tactics. Oh, how long? Oh, how long are we going at this? How long are we going at this? Yeah. Hello, guys. Welcome to Boxing Block Center, the home of Nigerian African Boxing. And please, if you're new to this channel, Make sure you click the like and of course the subscribe button right now and also go to the notification bell icon, click it and select all. Okay, so the appropriate new banger and new US video will definitely be notified. So um FR Jackba got a split decision over Guido Vianello um last night or no, this morning. Yeah, but last night in America. Um in a very interesting intriguing fight a fight that could have been an upset i remember vianello landing that right hand that counter right on fia jagba uh closer uh almost at the end seconds to the end of run two i was like really 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 uh, i was I got a scare for that. I was like, damn, this will be a big, big upset. Because it's really the fact that Jabba already defeated someone that beat Vianello, uh, which is Jonathan Rice. And Jabba dominated that fight, you know. But in this fight, Vianello came prepared. People are saying Jabba lost this fight. I don't think they watched this fight like from. A neutral stand standpoint. Okay, I'm a big fan of Ajaba, definitely. But let's keep it real. The early the early, early rounds he lost the, the the round. The first round he lost the, the lost the round. He lost the first round. He lost the second round definitely because that is where it got hot. And the third round, he came back. Okay, he he kept. Vianello on the bay with a jab and he started started landing. I listen, I even recorded this fight. I wish I could play this fight right now and analyze every round, every, analyze the fight round by round so you guys can understand. Ajaba did not lose this fight, bro. It was a split decision in favor of Ajaba because he took control of the middle rounds. But the last round, Round ten, he did he, he did lose that round. Vianello came back strong. Ajakba switched to sound, Southpaw uh, in round eight. Listen, Ajakba should be active, more active, and against guys that are dangerous guys. I think when Ajakba gets to fight someone that is like considered to be dangerous, that is when he's ready. Like he's at his, his at his best. Like at least someone that that I think Ajaba underestimated is that underestimated Vianello. Vianello said, "Yeah, Ajaba, he beat Ajaba this part before." So there was no fear factor. He wasn't afraid of Ajaba. But Ajaba, on the other hand, underestimated Vianello's uh, heart and uh, zeal to win. Everything was on, on the line for Vianello. And uh, he, he put up great effort. But Ajaba won this fight, bro. No, nobody's gonna tell me otherwise. Because I literally scored the f this fight round by round. And I had to rewatch it again to be, to be sure. Ajaba won. It was a, it was a close it was a close fight, but Ajaba won the fight. Let's go, bro. Yeah, Diwali. Adewale, you watched this fight yesterday or oh, last night on your on your time. Um, what do you make of this fight right here? Is that as a jackpot improved in your opinion, or what not? And also, people are suggesting that you should 
change his trainer. I don't think he needs to change his trainer, bro. Because some of the things he did yes last uh, last night, I've never seen him do that before. Like throwing yep. uppercuts from different awkward angles, angles. switches, south, yep. southpaw, putting combinations together. Like the only thing he needs to do is that when he throws a punch and when he attacks, he needs to like back back. You know when you throw when you attack you you back off a little bit, but he attacks and just he he attacks and he stay there basically. Comes in straight. And also you also you also saw uh, him him uh, bobbing and weaving uh, weaving and bobbing and weaving and and uh, slipping Vanilla's uh, uh, punches. I think that was round round seven or something. Yeah, I guess. I have to watch uh, to know the round. Uh, yeah, bro. Yeah. Take- yeah, man. Um, you know what? That was a very, very good and interesting fight, first and foremost. So I think both guys should be happy about their performance, both Ajagba and Vianello. There are many things that can be critiqued in how they performed, especially on the Ajagba side. Let me start with Vianello. I'm going to say that, in my opinion, from my own standpoint, Vianello's stock increased. Even though he lost that fight, now I know who he is, and I know that this guy is coming to fight, and he's coming to win, because that's what he displayed against Ajagba. He was coming forward, even when he got hurt a couple of times, he never gave up. He was using his clinches when necessary. And he seemed to have a quick recovery strength too, Vianello. Ajagba to showcase good recovery after getting wobbled in the second round. I mean, Ajagba was hit flush with a nice right hand. And Vianello went for the kill. I respect Vianello. He went for the absolute kill. He just couldn't get it done. And then the bell rang at the right time. So, congratulations to, although, uh, congratulations to Ife Ajagba, but I would also say congratulations to Vianello for showcasing his heart and his will to win. It's a different story about his skill set, being able to take him to a great victory. I don't think Vianello can beat guys that are in the upper echelon, but... He is good enough. Now, as for Ife Ajagba and as a fan of Ife Ajagba, I'm still going to be honest. I have to be honest with my criticism, although I'm happy that he won. And I also thought that he won that fight. I don't think Vianello won the fight. If that fight ended up as a draw, in my opinion, that would have been slightly unfair towards Ajagba. But at the same time, I can see that fight ending as a draw. If it was a draw, they would have to have run it back immediately. Something like that. But the split decision victory for Ajagba wasn't bad. Because I scored that fight personally 15-13. Um, I gave Efe Ajagba six rounds. And I gave Vianello four rounds. That's how I saw that fight. Um, it was a back and forth. They, there weren't too many swing rounds. I mean, there was a round there where Ajagba was clearly dominating. I think that must have been round eight, round six was clearly dominating around with his good jab. If he had jab out, he couldn't miss with the jab. If he threw five jabs, four jabs were landing on Vianello. <laughs> That's how precise the jab was. And then all of a sudden, towards the end of that round, Vianello comes back again with a nice flurry combination, trying to steal that round. I still would have given that round to a jabba based on the number of punches that landed. But I can consider that as a swing round as well. So even if I'm trying to be generous and giving Vianello one of the swing rounds, then it's 5-5, which is a draw. So in my opinion, a split decision victory was good enough for Ajagba. Um, some of the things that I observed about Ajagba, like you mentioned, Ray, um, Ajagba so, so, now sorry, throws up a cut. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, bro. Now listen, yeah. punches landed. Punches landed, okay? Yeah. Round one, Ajagba landed six, Vianello landed eight. Round hmm. two, Ajagba eight, Vianello 14. Round three, Ajagba 20, Vianello 26. Round four, hmm. Ajagba 24, 
via number 12 and this is Adagba took the fight from round four basically that was when yeah. he, he he started landing more and using his jab landing uppercuts uh, like like bone crushing uppercuts that i don't know how they really took that those uppercuts bro yo i don't know man <laughs> they need to do a they need to do some testing for this guy so round five <laughs> both landed 18 18 right round yeah. six ajaba landed 24 uh Vianna landed 17. round uh, seven Vianna landed uh ajaba landed 29 Vianna landed 26. round eight Vianello landed 11 Ajaba landed 18 round uh, 9 Ajaba landed 20 Vianello landed 20 so total Ajaba landed 167 um and uh, landed 152 so punches landed goes for Jabba fame you might not see okay. it yeah they might not see it because they feel like because Vianello was very aggressive you know I yeah think being aggressive some fight fans think, oh, the aggressive fighter should win. Yeah. But that's not the... That's and even judges. Even judges, some judges think that way too. Yeah. And if you think about it, now, if we're going to be honest with our analysis, the number of punches landed by both guys. Ajaba threw more power punches and landed more power punches. I don't know if you can check out the number of power punches thrown and landed because... Most of the punches that Jabba was landing were either one twos or the uppercut. And those are power punches. Those are punches that weigh more than jabs. So you still have to score it in favor of Ajagba either way because it was landing the more quality punches. Right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's just my analysis about that. Um, I feel like Ajagba definitely added more tools to his toolbox the uppercut was coming out of nowhere it almost seemed like from the third round once he landed the first left uppercut he didn't stop he continued throwing that uppercut till the end of the fight and the uppercut won him that fight if you ask me without that uppercut yes vianello would have had a better argument for that victory but because of the uppercuts, the way the different angles they were landing from, and they are all power punches, Ajagba won that fight based on that. In terms of ring generalship and defense, Ajagba's defense, I, I mean, slight improvement, slight, you know. I, I, I seen Ajagba doing some, implementing some head movements, you know. He wasn't really pivoting to the angles as many times. Maybe that's something he needs to add to his game, to his defense. But um, um, he wasn't getting hit as many times as the aggression that Vianello was presenting, if that makes sense. But at the end of the day, still a decent performance. Um, a little bit disappointing in the sense that we expected a Jaguar to demolish a guy like, like Vianello, but he did not. And it almost looks like what exactly are we doing here with Efe Ajagba? Are we trying to push this man's career towards a world title eventually at some point? Because you being at contender level Bro, for he, so long. He's the, sub, he's the, he's the WBC silver with uh, world champion. Right? Okay, WBC silver. So he's, I mean, that's contender level. He's that's a, contender he's, he's level. He's a WBC silver every world champion. And the okay. Bet, the okay. Bet, the bet was on the line last night, bro. So, what was he defending the belt, or that that belt was put of on course. the line last night? He's the receiver, uh, everywhere champion, bro. Well, so he's always been the, the the title holder for a long time. Well, I think he got it uh, when he fought Zhang Kozobuski last year. It was uh, oh, okay. it was vacant, so he fought Zhang Kozobuski, knocked uh, Zhang Kozobuski. Uh, out uh, in four, uh, he defended against uh, Joseph Goodhall, and now Guido Vianello. So it's got something, bro. I mean, that's something he can bring to the table. I, I just hope you know he's lined up for the. It's probably top five WPC ranking, or maybe top eight. It's Man, top, they, they it, need to. It, I, I think he's he's top five or so. Or yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I think he should be top. Yeah. If you have that WPC silver. 
you should be you should be like in line for to be one of the mandatories to be the wbc mandatory at some point if you have the wbc silver right that, that's my understanding i might be wrong so yeah they need to line him up man line him up with someone a little bit more dangerous because i like you said which i completely agree with if you place if Jagba in a dangerous situation it seems like he performs better than if you give him these guys that are unknown and then now this guy has taken some shine off Ajagba, if we are being honest, because he gave Ajagba a very, very good fight. I don't think and now we know him. I, I don't think he took shine away from Ajagba because Vian Vianello is not a bomb, bro. He is a very, is a very good. He was, he was tipped to be the next big Italian heavyweight. No? He's probably number one out of Italy, is he? I think he is, basically. I don't know. Let me check right here. According to BoxRec, yeah. Yeah. He, he is. He's number one out of Italy. Yeah. So Ajakba is wrong. Look at WC. Uh, look at WC ranking. Look at it right here. Fury is a champion. Joshua is number one. Rank number one. Franz Sanchez, number two. Ajit Kabaye, three. FH number four. Mm. Yeah. Jared Yo, Anderson, Jared Anderson five, and Dubois six position. Do you want to water seven? Damn, bro, water has been deranked basically. It was. John Yo, Ajagba should be, Ajagba should be should be paired with one of these guys, man. They should pair Ajagba up with one of these guys in the top top ten quickly. Don't give him Ajit Kabayo. Caballero, Caballero is going to win that fight. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to no, win no, that no. fight. No, no, Caballero is fighting Elgovich. Oh, okay. Yeah, fighting Elgovich. I, may, may I, I think Ajabba, Ajabba has problem with a mover. Like a fi mm. fighters, fighters that move. Like, there are no, they are not stationary. They move. Fighters that move. So Yo, has, speaking about movement, speaking about movement, did you see how Vianello, see Vianello's footwork was implemented? Switching to the side. He had a very good footwork, Vianello. Bro, he I gave Ajagba problems it, it based on that me, footwork. It, it reminded me of, of uh, Joseph, the new Joseph Park, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was a good fight, good weekend. of. Um, I also enjoyed uh, the Concecial fight on the undercard. That was a very good performance by Rob. Concecial, the guy from 130 pound division. Um, Jared Anderson. <laughs> I don't know, man. Anderson still, I don't know, man. That fight was so boring. That fight was lame. Anderson versus the other guy that he fought. I don't even know that guy's name now. But that was a boring fight, unfortunately, for Anderson. I hope he can come back and become a better fighter and entertain the fans. Because if you're not entertaining, you will lose the fan base. Period. Okay. So yeah, that's what I think. What do I want to see if Jaguar do next? Match him up with guys like Jared Anderson. Match him up. I said no, they man, shouldn't match they, him up with they would, Caballo. They, would, they wouldn't fight because they are they, the reason why they won't fight because they are trained by they are trained by the same person. Oh, they are the same coach. Hey, hey, Kuruma, the, I think the coach of uh, Shaco Stevenson, yeah. Oh, interesting. So all of them are in camp, so they're like basically also signed to G teammates. J Prince, you know. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, managed to manage by J Prince as well, so they will yeah. fight. Uh, people are no, I don't think they will fight. Ah, uh, man, yeah, I mean, step him up, man. I don't bro, mind the Kabayo fight I, I, too. I think, but I, Jabba I, needs to be I, ready I, for that. Jagba Jojo will be a nice, a nice fight. Oh yes, give me Joe Joyce. Absolutely, that would be a very, very good test. That would be, that would be nice. That would be nice, bro. That would be very, very good. And I think they can make that happen between I, Queensberry you know, and it, Top Rank. You know what's interesting though? I think the reason why Ajagba was able to win this fight, I think, in the fourth round when he started implementing his jab because he wasn't using it before. Yeah. And I think his his jab is key, bro. He should be using. He should build everything behind that jab. Hmm. Like, like I know the defense because once if you can build things behind that jab, 
he wouldn't need to defend that much because we cannot turn on Jagba to Mayweather, bro. He's not like he's not like, just like Joshua, how they try to turn Joshua into a a, a pure boxer, box a pure slick boxer. He's not. He's a monster. Mm. So monsters you just need to have some tools to them. But Jagba don't need to like like throw. Uh, uh, he needs to throw a punch. He needs to throw if he's throw combinations. He needs to move after training instead of just standing there. Yeah. You know, or move with his jab. He can move with his jab back. I know it's easy. It's easy saying it now, but I can see that I saw <laughs> the improvement, bro. I'm, I'm, in, yeah. I'm impressed. Like the, no, no, Ajaba definitely added some things to his like, game plan. Like, like imagine, I was impressed I, with. Imagine if Water had it with uh, the uppercuts. You know, imagine if Water had it things like that, like that Jagba had it now. I think Water would be unbeatable, bro. But you know one other thing, bro. When when some of these fighters add new stuff to their toolkit, they often lose something. So like when Ajagba added the uppercut, I, I'm, I'm not sure if about, about what exactly he lost, but there was something off still. It almost seemed like he didn't have enough power. I don't I, know if, if you noticed that. Yeah, the power I, was gone. Yeah, when he turned, he turned Southpaw. Um, yes, I saw that too. He turned Southpaw. So, yes. so, what do you make of that? Okay, I was surprised, you know, but I was impressed at the same time. Now, how effective was him turning Southpaw against Vianello? I don't think it was effective because once he turned Southpaw, that was the, that was the same time Vianello landed a combination, rushed forward, and Ajagba didn't switch back to Orthodox. He was still remained in the Southpaw stance. Then he eventually switched. And I think he lost that particular round that he turned Southpaw. I think he lost that round. I'm not too sure. No, 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 no. He didn't, lo- he didn't lose the round. I think the round he, he lost was, he tossed Southpaw for round, for that round, I think it was round eight. Round eight. So he tossed Southpaw, okay. he started landing left, great left, and Vianello couldn't land anymore. But Vianello is a very smart boxer. He, he immediately like, I think in round nine, Vianello changed, basically. He, he switched, he, he didn't switch to Southpaw, but he he figured out what Ajabo was trying to do. Hmm. He's a very, very smart boxer, bro. You have to give this guy props. He's a smart boxer. Oh yeah. He, I, yeah, he definitely has I, ring IQ. I, I, th- I think his, his rent was due. That's because I heard uh that guy talking of the commentator talking about uh the contract. Whoever wins this fight gets their contract renewed or something. Or guess something added to it. So that's why this guy was trying very hard to win this fight. You can just tell. We, so, I so, did well. He has to be proud of his performance, regardless of the loss. Something was on the line, bro. Very um, interesting. Man. Yeah, man. I, you, you heard? <laughs> I mean, that guy, that, the commentator. What would you be naming him? Um, that short guy. No, we didn't talk about him. He did criticize that, that guy. Did that African, that, that African American guy. He did criticize that. <laughs> ah, before when, whenever Jabba fights, he always criticizes Jabba. But yesterday, he even said he was impressed with Jabba. Nice. Was impressed. Was impressed. So, guys, you heard it from our brother Diwali. Stay tuned for more exclusive bangers. We'll be right back. Let's go. Cheers. <laughs>